Hello and welcome to In The Lab. It's me and Mr. Reese again, and we're going to show you an experiment we like to call Rainbow Fizz. So straight away, over to Mr. Reese. Okay, nice to see you all again. So what I've got in front of me here is hydrochloric acid and sodium carbonate. So acid and an alkali. And I'm going to prove that immediately to you by adding some universal indicator. Okay, as we know, neutral, green, uh, acidic would be red, and um, alkaline would be blue. So let's have a look at the colour of these solutions. So I'm just going to add a couple drops in there, swirl that around so it gives it a good mix, and you can see that nice red colour there just coming through the solution. So that means it's quite a strong acid then? Yeah, definitely. So if it was uh, more of an orange mm. or yellow colour, it would be a much weaker acid. Um, however, there's lots of H plus ions in there, very strong acid. Careful not to spill it on myself. <laughs> Um, moving over to sodium carbonate, okay, let's see what sodium carbonate is. Okay, straight away we see that purple colour coming through, a strong alkali, yeah. okay, really, really strong purple there, uh, rather than a light blue, which would be slightly weaker alkali, less OH- ions, okay, this has lots of OH- ions and is a strong alkali. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to put these two solutions um, in the burette and we're going to see what happens to them. Any ideas before we start, uh, Mr Walker, what do you think is going to happen? Well, I know that when you react an acid with an alkali, it's a neutralisation reaction. So it's going to become green because the pH will be 7, the universal indicator in there would make it green. Um, I've seen that done many times, but I know this is going to be a little bit different because we've got the burette. So mm. I would expect some kind of neutralisation to happen. Brilliant. Well, let's have a look. Uh, just checking this. That's shut. That's shut. Yes. Definitely. Perfect. Now, now yeah. it is. Okay. So um, I'm going to add the acid first, and I'm going to use. Um, I'm just going to add it in as such. Okay. Just down to the bottom. Fantastic. Okay. I'm going to switch this round. Any ideas why I'm switching these round for this, Mr. Walker? Well, I'm pretty sure you're following our good practice of making sure things don't react before they're supposed to. Exactly. If you put that one in again, then the carbonate would start to react with all the drops on the inside. I imagine you want it to react right at the bottom. Exactly. Otherwise, it will ruin our fun experiment. Yeah. Okay. So have a watch here. You'll see what's what's about to happen as I add this. Now I need to be careful um, because we will see a bit of effervescence. Um, so just watching in as I add these two solutions to one another. That is a lot of effervescence. I like that it. It's a lot of effervescence. Or bubbling to the lay people watching. Mm -hmm. And you can see here um, this band of blue. Um, kind of, we, we're unsure what's going on there at the moment, and then red at the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've still got two very distinct uh, areas. Do you know what's going to happen now, Mr. Walker? What do you think? Well, I, I would think we've got a nice rainbow effect, which is why we call it rainbow fizz. Uh, we've got the neutralisation happening in the middle. Now, I do know that sodium carbonate is more dense than mm. hydrochloric acid, so I imagine you've put them in a certain order for a reason. Exactly, because otherwise what would happen is the uh, molecules wouldn't come towards each other mm. as easily. Well, the densest um, sodium carbonate, yeah. the molecules actually fall through the hydrochloric acid and therefore able to react with the hydrochloric acid molecules. Yeah. And that's where we get that neutralization coming in. And it means that the neutralization happens right in this section here. So hopefully you can see now that this band is very, was once quite a small band of green. It's slowly growing. Mm. Uh, and actually, it's not just green. Uh, what other colors have we got there? We've got yellow, we've got orange, and we've even got a lighter blue before we go into um, this darker purple. Um, which, uh, any ideas what each of these mean, uh, Mr. Walker? Well, I like it when we get a pH scale and we use those in the lessons. And we've basically made a pH scale, haven't we? We've got pH Definitely. 1 going through probably 2 and 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, about there, green. Mm -hmm. And then 8, 9, 10, possibly 11 up to 12, maybe up here. What I have noticed as well is that the level are starting to go down as well from what we put it exactly. in at. It was definitely above 19, possibly above 18 earlier, and it's actually going down, which is not what you'd expect mm. from a normal reaction when you just put alkali and, and acid together. So why Exactly. That? Well, that's because of a certain gas released through this reaction. Do you have any idea what gas would be released from this reaction? Well, we've got, we've got a carbonate, a metal carbonate, and an acid, so that's always going to make a salt and water and carbon dioxide. Exactly, and that's the carbonate, always a, a clear sign there. It's that carbonate, the CO2 comes from that carbonate, released up 
into the atmosphere floats away and that's why it looks like we've got less there than we started with uh, and that's because it's all around us right now. That's a, that's a really fantastic range, I like that. Mm. I don't often see it that good when I've spotted things like this in the past so that is uh, that's quite spectacular. And that'll just keep going and going and going until we finally get a green colour all the Exactly, way and if we don't end up with green all the way through and it turns out slightly red, what that means is actually it's still a slightly more acidic solution. Yeah. Um, and how I could actually combat that to make sure it did get to neutral was adding more alkali. Mm -hmm. Same thing the other way around, if it was too uh, alkaline solution, I could add more um, acid to it yeah. and I would see that it would turn to that lovely green neutral colour. So I guess, I noticed that you put 10 acid in, 10 uh, centimetres cubed or 10 millilitres in, and you put 20 sodium carbonate in, why was that then? So due to the, the concentrations of the alkali and the um, acid, yeah. um, the amount of H plus ions and OH minus ions released mm -hmm. by, by each um, are slightly different. Um, so it's important that we balance them out. Um, it's not always a case of if I add 10 mil of this acid and 10 mil of this alkali, I'll get a neutralization. Um, so sometimes we have to weigh it up. We have to learn a bit more about how strong or weak these uh, acids and alkalis are before we react them. So you worked out that that would probably result, if it worked out rightly, which it rarely mm. does in science, but really does. we hope that that was the right amount to, be, um, to allow it to be completely neutral by the time it finishes reacting. Exactly. Whether I'm right or not, only time can tell. Um, but yes, that's exactly what we did beforehand, just to get that idea. Um, and like I say, in the future, if, if I really want to make this um, rainbow fizz slightly better, mm -hmm. is um, you know, if, if I see this go red by the end, um, I could try adding a couple mils at a time to find out exactly what the perfect yeah. uh, volume is, and then I know for the future. Um, so, a bit of nice. there. I like that. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll come back in a few minutes' time. Instead of waffling on even more, we'll come back <laughs> and we'll see what colour it is right at the end. So, back in a moment. Okay, we are back again. We've left it a few minutes, and all that's happened is that it's completely finished reacting. So we've lost all of the CO2 that's going to be released, and we've got a final solution that didn't actually end up turning out to be green. It is a little bit more kind of orangey yellow. So back to Mr. Reese to tell us about that. Mm. So um, clearly our calculations were slightly off uh, with making sure we had a balance mm. of acid and alkaline. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to take it away from the burette, uh, the burette sorry, and we're going to move to the conical flask. Okay, um, just so that we can actually turn this weak acid into that neutral solution we were looking for. Yeah, okay, so I'm just going to turn this here. You can just see I'm collecting now. Sometimes it fizzes slightly there, it's just the last uh, reactions going on. Okay, and yeah, once I've collected this solution, it's a bit more red, isn't it? Because we got the red, it out is the a little bottom. bit more red. There was still yeah. some sort at the bottom. It's quite hard to speed up that reaction, yeah, um, given the fact that it's uh, in the burette. Um, so um, it takes a little bit longer, and as you can see, it is mm. that's a little red solution. Um, so uh, we've got a various things here uh, which could help us. We've got universal indicator, hydrochloric acid, sodium carbonate. Uh, which one do you want me to use, Mr. Walker, to turn the solution green? If we're going to go for neutralising, we're back to the classic reaction of adding an alkali to the acid. Spot on. Let's go for it. And importantly, it doesn't even have to be sodium carbonate. Yeah. It could be sodium hydroxide. Um, any alkali solution, and we would see this colour change. So just adding this in the top, okay, and it suddenly goes blue uh -huh. as it starts to react again. I'll just do this. Oh, it's gone too blue. It's so gone too blue. We've got alkaline oh. solution. Let's have a look then. So let's go back the other way. I'm going to add slightly less this time so we don't uh, react as quickly. Get some acid in. Okay, oh, so that's a bit of red. That's better. Oh, that's looking better. Still, um, light blue there. Mm. Actually, quite similar to another practical we did. Oh, is that going green? That's going slightly green. We've got it. Have we got it? Do you know, you've hit it by chance. You've I got think it. I think I have. I think Perfect. I have. Perfect. Um, and, you know, you may be asking where the salt is that's formed, because we did talk about in this reaction salt's formed. Well, um, do you know where that salt is, Mr. Walker? Well, the salt, I would think, pretty sure about this, it's going to be dissolved. It's soluble, which means that it does dissolve in the liquid itself. So uh, let's work out what we've got. The salt is going to be sodium carbonate um, and hydrochloric acid. We're going to get sodium chloride, sodium exactly. carbonate, hydrochloric, 
for sodium chloride, which is common salt, isn't it? The exactly. salt you put on your fish and chips. Well, it is table salt. Um, and, uh, you know, if we evaporate off the water, yeah. we'll be left with those salt crystals. Um, so that's another process that hopefully we'll be able to show you one day as well. Yeah. I wouldn't drink it or I wouldn't eat the salt after this because mm. it would still It would be salt crystals covered in a green universal indicator. But, um, yeah, you're right. I don't know if there is a process to get rid of indicator once it's in. Um, but yeah, I think we should have a go at dissolving stuff in a later video. So watch out for that and we'll be back another time. So yeah, see you later. Mm -hmm.